Hello everyone, what is up? It is me, LBMTG, and today I'll be bringing you guys 10 uncommons that are in need of a reprint. Um, basically for this list, I looked for uncommons that were above the $5 mark, um, and then I just kind of took a look at them and said that these cards should not be quite at the price range that they're at, um, and then if we could get a reprint for them, that would be absolutely fantastic, whether it's just so that more people could get these cards into their hands, or whether it's that the card isn't necessarily the best card in the world and probably doesn't deserve to be a price tag uh, of quite what it's at. So uh, that was kind of what I looked for in this list. Tomorrow's video is probably going to end up being 10 commons that are in need of a reprint. Um, either that or possibly the day after that, that'll be the video for uh, for then. Um, I was going to take a look at some Battle Bond spoilers today, but after looking at how yesterday's video did and how many other channels are making Battle Bond spoiler videos, uh, I decided I would be the, the person who does something different. So you can go to someone else for, for some Battle Bond opinions and we're going to go ahead and take a look here at some MTG Finance kind of stuff here, taking a look at 10 uncommons in need of a reprint. Uh, so to start off, we have Lantern of Insight. Lantern of Insight, of course, being the namesake card for the modern deck Lantern Control. Um, right now, it is at $5.31 a piece. Uh, I feel like that's a little bit too high, especially because it is only played in one deck and compared to some of the other cards um, that are both on this list or that just exist in modern in general. Uh, Lantern of Insight, not necessarily the best card. Um, it doesn't even do the mill part. It's just that it reveals the top card of the library, um, so it is a pretty important part. It is a four of an every lantern control deck. However, that is the only deck that it sees play in. Uh, if we take a look here at the graph, you can see that uh, in terms of an uncommon, this was about 30 cents here up until uh, up until lantern control became a thing around here, and then it shot up to about five dollars, and it's been basically around there ever since, low point hitting uh, about $3 since Lantern Control, but then now, uh, now that Lantern Control won the Pro Tour, I would be very surprised if it uh, ever went below $5 again. Um, and so I think that a reprint could definitely help us with Lantern of Insight. Again, if we take a look here at the decks it's being played in, uh, it's being played in Lantern Control, and then this here, this WBRG is just Lantern Control, except without being called Lantern Control for some reason, but uh, nonetheless, it's all just the same deck, and this is the only deck it's being played in, so I feel like uh, it's definitely a need of a reprint, definitely not a card that I think of when I think about a $5 price tag. Uh, similar to Lantern of Insight, we're looking at a card, Mistvale Plains here, which again should not be $5. Uh, if we take a look here at the at the graph here it doesn't even go back all the way to shadow more but this used to be a very very bad card this would be the the type of card that you would be receiving as a last pick in draft back in the shadow more era and here it is at uh five dollars and fifty cents it's it's quite quite surprising how expensive this card really is. Again, this is only being played in one deck. These are all versions of Mono White Martyr, which of course is a deck that I'm uh, thinking about building, and so that's the reason that this card was brought to my attention as to why it was so expensive when it really shouldn't be. Um, I feel like it could fit into basically anything. Uh, you might have to reprint the whole cycle if you do so, but I feel like it's a reasonable reprint cycle. I'm not sure how the other lands are uh, that are in the same cycle as Mistfield Plains. Actually, we could just take a look at that right here. Uh, we'll go to Shadowmoor, and I'm assuming Mistfield Plains is just the most expensive one. Shadowmoor had a lot of uh, quite strong, quite strong cards in it. Um, I'm seeing for Uncommon, here we have Mistfield Plains, uh, and then I don't think we're going to find anything else in terms of... I'm actually not sure what the other cards in the cycle are. Uh, I don't think it's either of those. And we're here at the Uncommons again. Still, I don't think it's any of these. Um, yeah, so it looks like all the other ones are less than a dollar in the cycle, except for this one, like, is Leech Ridden Swamp, that's part of the cycle, right? Yeah, so that's a land swamp that uh, comes into play and then has an ability just like uh, just like Mistville Plains does, except Leech Ridden Swamp appears to be the second most expensive one at $0.97 cents, uh, compared to the fact that Mistville Plains is a little over $5 right now, which is quite... Uh, quite crazy. Uh, so that is Mistfield Plans. On to the third card. Uh, we have Eternal Witness. 
Uh, Eternal Witness right now is about $7.75. Uh, and when we take a look at how many times it's been printed, it's in essentially every Commander deck, um, and then even being printed in Modern Masters, uh, printed as, I believe this was an FNM promo, um, and then printed in uh, a dual deck as well. So it's seen a few reprints, but nonetheless it holds the $7.50 price tag. Uh, what makes Eternal Witness so good is that it just fits into every single green deck. There's never a bad time uh, to have an Eternal Witness to just return the back the best card from your graveyard to your hand uh, what makes this really cool is that it's any card it doesn't just have to be a creature like most green cards that will bring things back have to be um, this card allows you to grab an instant or sorcery out of your graveyard and so it really goes into essentially every single green deck and that helps the price tag stay where it's at so uh, despite the fact that it's been printed a ton of times I would be very surprised if it wasn't in uh, the commander set for for this year um, but nonetheless I feel like a, a reprint in something like a master set again could could help bring eternal witness down below the five dollar mark where most commons and uncommons should really be uh, the next card we're going to take a look at here is Remand. Remand is just a fantastic spell in Modern. Uh, essentially every blue deck plays this. It's extremely strong in uh, decks like the Jeskai Tempo variant where uh, they can draw a card and counter your spell to kind of uh, leave, you, leave you off a turn. Uh, so you do nothing for your turn, and then they get to draw an additional card then. Um, so they're basically time-walking you, plus drawing a card, which is quite, quite strong um, in, in Modern, especially if you have the decks to, or the creatures to back it up, something like a Snapcaster Mage, where you can at least get in for some damage and possibly have the ability to uh, replay it. You can see here are all the decks playing it, things like uh, the Gift Storm deck. Uh, the Gift Storm deck plays it uh, because if you take a look at... Grapeshot. Uh, so Grapeshot has the Storm ability, which says when you play this spell, copy it for each spell played before this turn. You may choose new targets for the copies. So if, let's say our Storm count is like uh, 10, we cast Grapeshot. That's our 10th spell for the turn. Uh, so we have 10 copies of Grapeshot on the stack. Uh, we can then remand our own Grape Shop. We can uh, counter that, put it back into our hand, and draw a card. And then, if we have the mana to do so, we can recast the Grape Shot. Our storm count is now up uh, by an additional two. So now uh, we're looking at 22. Uh, points of damage coming from the grape shots um, instead of, or actually, I think it's 21 because we countered our own. We countered our own first grape shot, but uh, still, you're looking at enough damage to kill your opponent just off of remanding your own grape shot. That's the only reason that Storm plays it. Um, but aside from that, every other control slash tempo variant uh, plays it in modern. Uh, even things like Scape Shift, uh, the four color version with Bring to Light, uh, is currently playing this as a way to give themselves some uh, some additional turns to stay alive, so that they have the turns to combo off. Um, and then things like Blue Moon, Jeskai, and uh, Grixis Delver, all just using them as great counter spells. So definitely in need of a reprint. Hasn't been reprinted since, I believe, Modern Masters 2. Um, and you can see the Modern Masters 2 versions here at about $7, so even those are above the $5 mark. Um, it's, it hasn't been printed, again, in like a regular standard set. I kind of doubt that it ever will. Um, but again, seeing it in another Master set could end up uh, doing wonders for this card's price. Uh, next, we're going to take a look at Mana Morphos. This card is quite expensive, um, and I honestly don't expect this to see a reprint anytime soon, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, the reason I think that is because of the hybrid mana symbol. The hybrid mana symbol really is causing a lot of cards to go up in price because uh, they know how hard it is for Wizards of the Coast to reprint something uh, that has either like a unique keyword or um, you, something unique about it. In this case, it being the, uh, the hybrid mana symbol is the unique part. Uh, this card was originally printed in Shadowmoor as well, uh, and it was printed at Common, and those Commons are now around the $9.50 mark as well. Here, these being the uncommon ones, so they're slightly more expensive just because there's less quantity in the... Uh, uh, in the world for people to get the Modern Masters ones, but nonetheless, this card sees a lot of play. Um, you can see Modern, Popper, Legacy, uh, seeing a bunch of play in a ton of different formats, and then things like Mardu Pyromancer, uh, Gift Storm, Boggles, Bell Church, Reverse Death Shadow, all sorts of just great, uh, great decks, and you basically need um, some copies of Metamorphose in uh, in each of those decks. Um, so Metamorphose being a fantastic one that I'd like to see a reprint of quite soon as well. 
The next card we're going to take a look at here is Kitchen Finks, yet another card from Shadowmoor. Uh, it feels like essentially every card on here is either from Shadowmoor or Fifth Dawn so far outside of uh, outside of Remand. Um, but this card is an uncommon that has, uh, this is our first one above the $10 mark. This one is about $11.40. Uh, if we take a look at the graph here, you can see here it was about the $5 mark, and then people knew it needed a reprint, and then uh, people were expecting it to get reprinted here in the uh, Modern Masters 2 set, and then when it didn't, it spiked from $5 up to about $9. $9, and then since then it's just been slowly growing, hitting about the $15 mark here at some point around Eternal Masters, um, and then slowly just kind of uh, dropping back down to $11.40. Nonetheless, this card still sees a ton of modern play if we come down here. Um, you can see things like Jund play at Counters Company, uh, all sorts of decks. It's very good against the burn matchups and very good against the grindy matchups. Um, and it also sees a lot of play in the uh, combo decks with um, uh, the Abzan, or yeah, Abzan company decks, the Counters Company. There we go. That's what I was trying to explain there. Uh, sees a ton of play in there where it is extremely, extremely strong, but then just all other green and white decks, this card could be a sideboard staple in those kind of decks for uh, the burn matchups and the grindy matchups, as I was saying previously. Again, this kind of has the same thing as Manamorphos, where it's being held back from a reprint by the fact that it does have a hybrid mana symbol. Uh, you really need to have kind of the hybrid mana set be uh, something where that would cause it to get the reprint. Um, notably, Ravnica is coming up. We might see a reprint of the hybrid mana symbol cards in uh, these new Ravnica sets. That would be pretty cool. Um, unfortunately, I don't expect to see it, especially because of the Ufi creature type. I'm not sure how many Oofies there are on uh, on uh, Ravnica, um, but nonetheless, I think Kitchen Finks uh, getting another reprint would be absolutely fantastic. Like I said here, it looks like it's going down in price a little bit, but really, I I would be extremely shocked if this card ever went below ten dollars again uh, without a reprint. I wouldn't be surprised if it started to uh, climb back up eventually here and hit that fifteen dollar mark again. Uh, the next card we're going to be taking a look at here is Ancient Ziggurat. Ancient Ziggurat right now is about an $11.50 card. Uh, when you could see previously before uh, this point, it was between $3 and like $3.75, somewhere in that mark throughout here. Um, and then once uh, the creature decks started to become a thing, then you're seeing around $12 to $11.50. You're looking at prices around there. Uh, most Mainly the decks where you're seeing this is the Humans deck uh, in Modern right now, which is arguably one of the best decks. It does make up the highest percentage of the meta currently right now, and you can see that uh, along with Unclaimed Territory to tap for any color, uh, Cavern of Souls to tap for any color for your humans, and then uh, Ancient Ziggurat being another land that taps for any color for your humans. Uh, it makes these cards extremely, extremely strong and makes this deck very powerful. Um, and so I think Ancient Ziggurat really needs another reprint. Um, in terms of foil prices, uh, you're looking at about uh, $18 for a uh, for a pack foil. Uh, it was reprinted in the Slivers deck, which also it sees play in the Slivers deck, but the Slivers deck is a lot more uh, fringe. You don't really see it quite as often. Actually, I think that's what this Legacy deck might be here. Uh, this might be a Lauren or Slivers. Yeah, and it looks like it's Slivers. And you can see here uh, where is it? Ancient Ziggurat. So it's only a three of here, um, but nonetheless, you can see that it's really important in these multicolored decks, most most of which end up being tribal decks, like here we have Slivers, and then in Modern we have Humans. So uh, Ancient Ziggurat could definitely use a, a reprint. Uh, it would be a nice card to see hit below the $10 mark. Uh, this should be somewhere around the, I would say somewhere around like seven to eight dollar mark that's still a lot of money for an uncommon i understand that lands are generally more expensive um when it comes to these kind of things but uh that's that might actually be something to look forward or to or something to look into is uh what kind of uncommon lands there were in recent sets that have the potential to go up um the first one that comes to my mind saying that is something like aether hub which is an uncommon um of course that was a functional reprint essentially of tendo ice bridge which was at one point a 30 dollar card so um, Aether Hub might be a reasonable card to look into to some point hit the uh, some point hit the ten dollar mark in the future. Not a hundred percent sure on that one though, but uh, it, looking into some uncommon lands from uh, past past sets is probably something that uh, I'm going to start uh, looking at after I'm done with this video. Uh, again, we have another land here, the next one, Dryad Arbor here, um, this one being thirteen dollars. Uh, you can see it's just slowly been going up ever since. Um, 
what makes this one so uh, so interesting, I guess, is that uh, this this version of the Future Sight Dryad Arbor here uh, looks a lot different from the uh, from the Vault of Realms version, and the From the Vault Realms version has caused a bit of controversy in the past um, with people playing them and then just leaving them down by their forest to try and make their opponents think that they don't have a creature in play. Um, the rule has actually been changed regarding Dryad Arbor. Dryad Arbor needs to be played up where the creatures are instead of where the lands are, so this version has had a little bit of controversy in the past. Um, but I think that if they uh, reprinted a Dryad Arbor and used sort of like, maybe maybe not necessarily the similar border, but uh, maybe kind of did a fixed from the Vault Realms version where it looks less like a forest, more like a creature kind of thing. Um, I think that would be really cool to see, and I think that would be a good opportunity for Wizards to kind of say, hey, this whole controversy that we've had over Dryad Arbor, it's over now, you can just use this new version instead. And then, of course, it would lower the price as well, because it does see modern play, uh, mainly in the Boggles deck, that's where it sees the most play. And then also in Legacy Elves, because you can play uh, Green Sun Zenith, uh, which searches your library for a green creature with converted mana cost X, so for one green mana, uh, you have X equals zero, and you can find yourself a Dryad Arbor to ramp you, as well as put a creature onto the board, so it's very strong in that deck as well. Uh, on to the next card we have here, $31.40 for Goblin Lore. Uh, Goblin Lore currently only sees play in one deck, and that is Black Red Hollow One. Um, up until about the Rivals of Ixalan time, uh, we were seeing that down here it was about 20 to $0.30 cents for Goblin Lore. And then since then, with the popularity of Black Red Hollow One, it has increased to about the $31 mark. At some point here, it was around the $40 mark, slowly dropping a little bit, but that's because I think most people are very skeptical of the fact that this one should have a reprint, and most likely will soon. Um, just because $30 for an uncommon is a little bit absurd. Um, it's been printed in the past uh, in Portal and as well as the Starter 1999, uh, and those are around the $40 mark as well. So, like I said, this one only seeing play in one deck here, uh, Black Red Hollow one. And so I think that, again, similar to Lantern of Insight, this one being kind of an extreme case where this one is $30 compared to Lantern of Insight being only $5, uh, these cards that only see play in one deck don't feel like they should have uh, such expensive uh, price entry points. Um, you would expect cards around the $30 mark to be seeing play in multiple decks. You wouldn't expect a $30 card to only be seen play in one deck, uh, if that makes any sense. It feels kind of, just feels kind of weird um, knowing that there's a card that's this expensive that only sees play in one specific deck. Um, you would normally expect it to be like uh, some sort of a good creature that you can see in several different mid-range decks, but I guess Goblin Lord is very crucial for the Black Red Hollow One deck, but uh, just the fact that it's an uncommon that hasn't been printed in a while, uh, along with the fact that it's only seen play in one deck, uh, somehow led to a $30 price tag, which is quite crazy when it comes to an uncommon. And the final one we have here, the most expensive one on the list, is Ancient Tomb. Ancient Tomb only ever being printed once in Tempest. Uh, I guess it was reprinted as a Zendikar Expedition and a From the Vault Realms version as well. But nonetheless, you're looking at about $50 here for your Uncommon, which is quite... Uh, quite a lot of money for an uncommon. Um, you can see around here, you could get these things uh, around, this was like Theros, Born of the Gods time, they were around uh, $10, and then slowly went up to around $13, $15, um, and then to around 25 and then now we're looking at the next wave here where it's around the $50 mark. Um, notably, Ancient Tomb is not on the reserved list, which is nice. However, it does see play in a lot of eternal formats. We're talking about Legacy and Vintage here uh, with Ravager Shops and then things like Prison, Sneak and Show. Basically every, uh, or I shouldn't say every, most Legacy and Vintage decks, especially the ones focusing on colorless creatures like for example, the colorless Eldrazi lists, where uh, you're playing a bunch of artifacts, where Ancient Tomb can be very strong in those lists. Um, and then Ravager Shops, again, where you're playing a bunch of artifacts, uh, this one being the Vintage list. And again, <clears throat> very, very strong card uh, with Ancient Tomb in this list. So again, I think an Ancient Tomb reprint could be very good for us. Uh, I don't think it'll be coming anytime soon. Um, but I think it would be a very nice one to have, similar to how they reprinted Wasteland and Eternal Masters and Rishid and Port in uh, Masters 25. I could definitely see them doing Ancient Tomb at some point um, in the near future, kind of slotting into that that uh, specific slot. 
Um, I think I think that would be a, a good choice for for Ancient Tomb. Um, of course, I'm not expecting it to be an uncommon. I'm expecting them to uh, shift it up to a rare, like they did with uh, both Wasteland and, or I guess Richard Import was a rare initially, but they shifted up Wasteland to a rare. So I wouldn't be surprised if they shifted up Ancient Tomb to a rare as well. Um, so nonetheless, this has been the video, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy it. We'll go over the 10 one more time. Uh, we're looking at Lantern of Insight, Mistvale vale Plains, Eternal Witness, Remand, Manamorphos, uh, Kitchen Finks, Ancient Ziggurat, Dryad Arbor, Goblin Lore, and Ancient Tomb. These are all 10 uncommons that I think could really use a reprint in Magic the Gathering. And I hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, a like would always be appreciative. Uh, if you guys have uh, not seen any of my content before and this is your first time seeing me, subscription would absolutely be appreciated uh, as well. We did hit 1,000 subscribers this weekend, which is absolutely fantastic. So thank you guys again for that. Um, and this has been another Magic the Gathering video, and I will see you guys here tomorrow for yet another one.